Influencers Part 1 No Battle <laughs> So, you feel like talking yet, Mr. Spy? Cause we can keep going all night long. Who's your boss? Tell us everything you know. Ah, yes, harder. Deep underground, in an undisclosed part of Tokyo, sits a secret prison outside the boundaries of the law and the public eye. Chained to one of its walls is your new homeroom teacher, Sandayu Mamochi. His arms and legs are locked in place with heavy shackles, and the sounds of his repeated floggings echo throughout the dark, dismal chamber. Earlier in time, moments after you escaped Shinjuku Academy for Akihabara. Within the school grounds, the students who attack you remain agitated and continue their violent and destructive rampage. But Sunday's attention is not on the students themselves. Rather, he's honed in on the contaminant among them, the source of their actions. There they are. Intelligence operatives among the students and faculty, and not in small numbers. When an insurrection is staged, there are invariable professionals mixed in with the crowd. Any fledgling spy knows that much. They're the ones who spread doubt, incite rage, divide the crowd along arbitrary lines, and tear apart social groups from within. Sandayu is no stranger to these tricks for he himself had been on that side of the fence for a very long time. Seems they've all managed to escape from this. Thankfully, not just Arthur, but his friends, too. Exactly as predicted by Sandio's client well in advance, you've successfully been spirited away to Akihabara by this point. The request was a straightforward one. Your safety and that of all those around you, to as great an extent as possible. And that request has been quite handily fulfilled. Uh oh. Was this handled by Smoky God then? But with the situation remaining out of control back in Shinjuku, it seems uncertain when, or even if, you'll ever be able to come back. So the next step is to trace the root of the problem and cut it off. The operatives face Sandayu as one. Apparently, they finally figured out that he's from the same line of business. Working together, they begin to process of slowly and systematically ensnaring Sandayu. Well, I guess this is where I play with him for a bit until I let myself get caught. Ah, this part sucks. As a professional himself, Sandayu Momochi knows exactly what's coming for him after he's caught. Wrecking stuff, you know. Or maybe it's just life that's tough. I suppose there's no escaping even if you're a spy when you reach the point when the entire school has been infiltrated. Pain cries of joy escape Sandy's lips, and it's clear they aren't just for show. Ninja are trained to withstand torture, and that training is etched deep into Sandy's core. But withstanding doesn't mean ignoring. Pain is pain, and Sandy's ability to feel it is not something he can just turn off. And after hours of enduring this pain, his stamina and willpower are completely drained, as well as some other part of him. He's little more than a husk of the man he was going into this. <laughs> yeah! Why don't you just tell us what we want to know already? You're never gonna get out of here otherwise! Sandy used torture gestures towards the shackles winding him to the wall. I'm an agent specializing in getting information out of people just like you. Through any means necessary. Scary, huh? Oh, I just realized this is like an agent that's not actually the mob agent. Is he a spy inside the tycoons? Uh, keep talking, amateur. These monotonous showy floggings. They'll never work. Not that I'm complaining. I wouldn't want my torture to be good at their job. If different methods were to be employed, you'd be in serious danger of spilling the beans. So in that sense, this current situation is manageable, but only just. 
Ugh, this is the worst. I don't think I'm cut out to be someone else's protector. Hey, that's enough messing around. A messenger for our client will be arriving at our portal any time now. Got instructions for our next assignment, so you'd better make this guy talk for then, one way or another. <laughs> what? You're telling me a third party knows about the agent's portal? Don't care who told them, that's a breach of protocol. I guess even the agents, who aren't necessarily trying to uh, win the game themselves, have their own portals. Our client is the Invaders, one of the three true guilds. We didn't have to tell them squat. They already knew. Oh, great. The high and mighty guild that acts like they know everything. Ugh, they give me the creeps. Oh, so these guys aren't working for the Invaders then? The agents, huh? So, these are my old compatriots after all. Gotta say though, the organization's seen better days. That said, I've never seen these buffoons around a Casca portal before, which means... They say that when one has the upper hand, one's tongue tends to loosen, and even the most well-kept secrets just might cascade often. Wait, their client is the invaders? My client- oh, never mind. Uh, I guess they are the <laughs> client. My client is a member of the invaders too. What's going on here? <laughs> Confirmation it is Spooky God. Um, so it seems there are uh, di opposing factions here within the invaders. I mean, I guess I was clear with Spooky God's intent to help us and the invaders actually causing the assault against us. Why would one faction within the invaders want to hunt him down and the other save him? I'll put this onto you. I mean, I guess there could just be some disagreement within the guild ranks. Internal discord isn't too rare these days. Back in his homeland, long ago, Sandyu mastered the art of ninjutsu and swiftly rose to stand shoulder to shoulder with the most elite ninja of the famous Ika clan. He wanted for nothing. Fame, fortune, and honor were all afforded him in ample quantities. After a time, he took in an orphan who had nowhere else to go. This orphan showed tremendous skill in ninjutsu and became Sandoyu's disciple, to whom Sandoyu bestowed all that he had. He swore he would protect that child. Sandoyu, who had everything, wanted nothing more than to safeguard the orphan in his care who had nothing. And yet, despite being given so much and cared for so deeply, the disciple took everything Sandoyu had to give and ran off with it. Ugh. It was not long before the word of this prodigious disciple, Gomon Ishikawa, there he is, he exists, reached Sandayu. Apparently, he had become a thief of some renown in another land. Perhaps that's a measure of success in a way. Perhaps it isn't Goma who did wrong in this scenario, but Sandayu. Ninja are not protectors. They take and destroy. Goemon, perhaps, should be praised for mastering the ninja techniques and coming to terms with their true nature. Those who give their all to protect will lose everything. Those who show mercy will fall victim to the merciless. Sanda Yumamochi, a great ninja who survived times of great turmoil, knows this truth better than anyone. Maybe it's about time I show these jokers just what a master ninja can do. Infiltrating, dividing, and destroying organizations from the inside is kind of our thing after all. <laughs> Fancy transition. With a symbolic gesture of his fingers, Sandu detaches limb after limb, slipping out of his restraints. The want to provide salvation for those who are suffering. This kindly desire can easily turn to greed, becoming a shackle that binds one to that suffering. Having brought salvation to another, perhaps one will feel resentment when salvation is not returned in kind. To save one, perhaps another must be sacrificed, creating the first link in a chain of hatred. Even when choosing oneself as a sacrifice, Another who cares for thee will surely be burdened with grief. Greed is what lies at the root of it all. It is eternal suffering incarnate. 
In this complex world, destiny itself a twisted mire drags those who succumb to greed down into the depths of eternal flame. Therefore, it is impossible for any one being to save any other, much less to save everyone. And yet, you are attempting to do just that, are you not? In point of fact, I have always... No, it's nothing. Please forget I said anything, Arthur. Fare thee well, and do heed my warning. When next we meet, I intend to treat you as a proper opponent. Hey, where are you? Where did you go? Come on, answer me, Arthur! Katobalpas! Oh, there you are. I'm so glad you're okay. I lost track of you in all that chaos. Well, as you can see, I'm fine. Sorry to avoid you, though. You seem a little preoccupied. Did something happen, Arthur? I need to tell you something. Uh, can I ask you something? Huh? Me? I mean, if I can help out in some way, I gladly will. I want to make your guild master. Could you try arranging that? I know it won't be easy. What? My guild master? Like, the guild master of the Akihabara creators? Um, Smokey God did indicate to us that it was he who uh, set the policy of no fighting of some kind, I believe. Um, Katopoplast looks very perplexed at your quest. Uh, I mean, if that's what you want, I'll see what I can do, but, well... Well, you know, Katobo's pause has been trying to see him, too. The situation here in Akihabara is a little complicated. Uh, such a bother. Things are becoming more convoluted by the second. The computational complexity of dealing with all this while also working toward the continuation of the game is astronomical. This girl, guildmaster to one of the three shoe guilds, grumbles to herself as she flies through the air in the hand of a giant robot. The on-site inspection and settlement with the warmongers of the west took much longer than expected. At least it's convenient that the game's trophy has gone to Akibara. I'll be able to stock up on some parts I need. Well, it looks like she knows pretty fast. The girl unconsciously caresses her robot companion as she directs it to the cyber paradise ahead. We prodigies more or less rely on our machines' sides for continued functionality of our daily lives. Hmm. We know that Bertro is, or rather, was transformed into uh, some sort of a cyborg. Uh, I think Isaac, according to his research report file, he is also attached to some machine. And I suppose, uh, in this case, Kern is referring to her uh, robot that carries her around. However, I'm not really sure about Duo's case. How sad. We could use all the self regenerative parts we want, but there's still no such thing as maintenance-free. It's for this reason that Akihabara has been designated as a neutral zone free of guild battles. Its independence is not like the neutrality the Kamata Guild professes. Akihabara does not, in fact, profess or champion any position at all. Hmm. It is, instead, something of an exception. A district that falls outside the rules of the game altogether. It's a rare case where the guild masters of three true guilds all came together as one and forged a pact with Akihabara to uphold this unique status. So, it seems the three true geniuses need to do maintenance there? <laughs> it's kind of funny, it's like, here's the neutral guild, and then they got shit-fucked by the warmongers uh, through uh, a breaking of that neutrality. And then he here's uh, this area that's just like, yeah, we don't give a shit, and then... <laughs> uh, yeah, they get away being neutral-free, or neutral without effort. Plan D may visit here as well in his efforts to repair Plan B. Perhaps our paths will cross. 
So stoic and emotionless is her face as she says this, that none can read her intentions behind those words. For the girl, emotions are so utterly trivial and beneath her as to be effectively worthless. For each of the child prodigies who had the three true guilds, Curran included, the continuance of the game and the recording of its past data are prioritized above all else. To ensure the progression of the game, they avoid direct involvement in its battles or general trends. However, if the continuance of the game is threatened in any way, they will not hesitate to act. Something is different about this loop though. Things have been taking an unusual turn. What is the cause, I wonder? Is it the removal from play of numerous world representatives? Or is it the collapse of the terminal set to exclusively monitor the trophy? Either way, the invaders are suspiciously making moves in this loop that they've never made before. I mean, I would figure that no matter what loop you're in, the three true guilds always make moves they never make before, otherwise it would be a pointless loop. And plan A, their genius guildmaster, is once again much too busy to pick up his phone, it seems. Okay, so we knew that Kuren was in contact with a spy, uh, San Kamara, within the invaders, but is this uh, confirming that she actually contacts the other true geniuses directly? The timing is too convenient to be a mere coincidence. I can only conclude that this lack of contact is intentional. The most frustrating part though is that despite my own genius, I can't even begin to figure out what plan A is thinking. And I suppose that the others can't figure out what I'm thinking either. All of the prodigies were birthed in the same lab, yet their futures all took very different turns from one another. So dissimilar are their methods, so incompatible are their theories regarding their common goal, the evolution of humanity, that it is hard to believe they are practically siblings. All born with equal super intelligence and a shared objective, following a different path of their own volition. Um, equal super intelligence, so huh? to my understanding, I think they mentioned that uh, Isaac was actually the, the smartest out of all of them. Um, but may maybe they're just referring to uh, the effectiveness of their philosophies, uh, with Curran being uh, education, or tutelage rather, uh, Isaac being uh, union or invasion, and uh, Bircher being uh, warfare or competition. Perhaps this simply serves as proof of the evolutionary diversity and constantly changing nature of humanity. Kern has some trouble getting used to this concept, however, since she and her fellow prodigies have been referring to one another as one and the same. Uh, there's no sense whining about it. No one knows them better than I do, so it's time for me to forge a hypothesis and act upon it. How should I view the actions of the invaders? What can I determine from them? The world representatives of the invaders guided the trophy to Akihabara. So the first question I must ask is, why now? Why lead him there? The world representatives know these past few loops have been rather stagnant. Nothing seems to stir the game. No new developments have been seen in a while. Huh, is that the case? With that in mind, do the invaders think they can spark a game-changing event from that location? There is a guildmaster there who is uninvolved with guild battles. Much like us, I suppose. A genius, offering everything one could possibly offer in the pursuit of creating something never before seen. Turing. So, you see, the situation here is a little unusual, which may make it difficult for you to meet our guildmaster anytime soon. For one thing, like I told you before, only the most creative people get to meet them at all. So the cost for him won't cut it, huh? Well, if I make it with you, couldn't we force our way in then? I've tried that before, actually. I tried to impose myself. But it was no use. They were hard to reach. The thing is, you can't just make any old video, manga, anime, or costume and suddenly gain admission. It has to be something no one's ever seen before, 
something that deeply influences others. Something no one's ever seen before. Yes, exactly that. Something completely original. Basically, just creating something interesting won't cut it. You have to be a visionary capable of changing people. There seems to be some sort of intersect here with uh, the invaders changing people and uh, that being a requirement here. There's no way I can do that! Only geniuses can pull that off! I have to disagree. Huh? Oh my god, it's the NG! Hello, the NG. Everyone knows you. Hello, I'm Leanne and Chi. I work as a producer here in Akihabara. Uh, Leanne and Chi? A producer? Leanne and Chi simply nods in response. Oh my gosh, she can produce us until we get to sh meet uh, Turing. I guess that's how it works. <laughs> you want to meet the Akihabara Guildmaster now? I've heard about you two. Word on the street says you're really putting yourself out there. If you'll indulge me, I can teach you how to be true creators. Do you want to know how to make something worth catching the good master's eye? Oh, don't worry. I'm here for you. Let the energy be your producer, and help you realize your dreams. This is really sus. The energy works for the game masters. Also, the entertainers. I'm not sure if he works for the creators, but maybe she's very familiar with coming into contact with, uh, or helping people come into contact with Turing. Yeah. Well, now that we've rekindled our old friendship, if you've nothing else, I'll be taking my leave. I do so wish I'd had a chance to meet that team Los fellow I've heard so much about while I was here, though. If the rumors I've heard are to be believed, I rather think he and I would have gotten along quite swimmingly. Bringing his conversation with Gruznik to an end, Lassinori turns to leave but is stopped in his tracks by another voice. Hold up. It may be finished with him, but I've still got something to discuss with you. Oh, and what might the little lady who means so much to my old friend wish of me? Cut the patronizing crap. I'm not here as some sidekick. I've been looking for you for my own reasons. You are Masanori Daikaku Inumura of the Eight Dog Warriors, right? Hmm. My question is regarding your other parent who made you. If you'd permit me to ask, what was your name again? My deepest apologies for having failed to remember it after Krasnik here so kindly introduced you. It's Ellie. You do well not to forget it this time. I'm Kabukicho's guildmaster. Very well. Before I answer any questions related to that topic, Ellie, I must ask one of my own. Are you prepared for what you're leaping into here? I know of the Eight Dog Warriors. It's the accursed name given to the bearer of these orbs. It brings with it only hatred though, as far as I'm concerned. This orb has done nothing but derail the course of my life. I detest it, and I detest the father who burdened me with it. I detest everyone and everything that has deigned to warp the life and livelihood I should always have been afforded. Masanori's voice begins to crack, and his tone gradually rises into that of an indignant shout. He glares at Ellie with a look of desperation and pain in his eyes. Hmm. Don't hate the messenger. I just came to meet with you, that's all. Thoughts of her own transformation from human to vampire, and all of that had been ripped away from her for it are evoked as Ellie grimaces with discontent. But I can hardly turn back now, can I? Wait, what do you say? You want to become a producer? You want to make something completely new, no? Yet you have no idea how to accomplish that, whereas I do. Off the top of my head, I can't help but wonder if you've considered perhaps collaborating with other creators. Uh, collaborating? Imagine infusing your cause drama with the recognition and renown of an already established talent. 
they can help you create something that will captivate any audience. A thrilling proposition, don't you think? Do you really think you can make that happen? What do you think, Arthur? Do you know of any specific talents? Well, if you're in Katobloplast, then so am I. I have an idea for a co possible collaboration partner who might work well with you two. Is it Tindalos? So come, just follow my lead. Hmm? What's the matter? I'm not convinced we, we can trust you yet. I only approached you because I recognize your talents and felt that I was going to waste. And since it is my job to help people like you succeed, I figured I would intervene. Is that so wrong? There, then. Uh, it's not wrong at all. Sorry. Well, we'd love your help, Leanne and she. Let's see what you can do. Influencers, part two. In a wide river, so deep that its bottom can't even be seen, I found a bright shining stone. Yeah, oh, this might be Leanne and G's backstory. Yeah, it is. I've been anxious for so very long, harboring a desperate wish to be needed by someone. I want to be their pillar, their source of strength. Helping others would make me feel worthwhile. But what if I were to help someone who can't live on their own without another by their side? Most likely, I'd feel I would be doing wrong by that person. You know, he'd be quick to say you don't need saving. That you'd soon become someone who can bring everyone joy through your sparkling shine. You certainly have been shining all along. The problem is, you've forgotten a bit how to shine your brightest. If I can lift you out of the deep, up to a place where your shine can truly be seen, everyone will surely be captivated by you. So come with me, and shine so brightly that even I can't polish you any further. Hello, yes. The client's envoy has arrived. Your presence is requested in the reception area to discuss the next mi- What? The interrogation room is on lockdown. The prisoner has escaped, and all pursuing agents have ta been taken down. My, it sounds as if you are in a spot of trouble right now. Please, take your time resolving it. I'm happy to wait. Our sincerest apologies. We'll be back as soon as possible. <sighs> Masanori absent-mindedly pounds a nearby wall with his fist, producing a resounding thud. It's all he can do to maintain his composure. Stumping his quivering shoulders, he recalls the encounter he just had. It was a farewell to an old friend, and an infuriating opening of some very old wounds. But for as painful as it may have been, Masanori knows he has to soldier on. If things continue on their current path, he knows that this Tokyo this world will bear witness to a great calamity and come to a decisive end. What's frustrating is that no one else seems to understand the gravity of the situation. If the current system of the world isn't changed, it will spell absolute ruin for everyone. I must be strong. I must tear from this world its ostentations and fallacies. No matter what or who stands to be sacrificed, it is imperative that this revolution be successfully executed. For if he does not at least do what's right by the future, Masanori thinks, then what even is the purpose of his existence? It was not long after I had come of age that I wed my beloved and led death to us part. My past is not one to be proud of. I lived in fear of my father and betrayed my stuffs. Leaving me was the burden of shouldering an unforgivable sin. To atone for that sin, I must save this world. Ah, uh, if only I could have made that streamer's acquaintance. Based on what I've heard, I truly believe Team Delos could have been a great assistance to me. 
Tudelo surely would have helped bring about my revolution had I only been able to secure a meeting. Murmuring these words under his breath, Masanori makes a great show of lamenting his lot, almost as if he were performing in a stage play. Wait up, Lian and Chi! Sorry, I'm not very fast on my feet. In fact, I can only move after I charge. So, who's this collaboration partner you were thinking for, uh, for us? Five bucks is fifteen loves. Yeah, I'm curious about that too. I can't even imagine who it'd be. Can't you just tell us? The person I'm about to introduce you to is perhaps the single most suitable collaboration partner who could ever exist for you. I trust you've heard the name of Tindalos of the Ikabira Guild before. Alright, I'm gonna lose me five bucks. Welcome, welcome! Thanks for tuning in to the Tindalos channel. I hope everyone's slaying their week. Get ready for the thrills, both clean and otherwise. But let's not get banned for them this time, K. Okay? The agenda for today is gaming, gaming, and more gaming. Till we run out of juice and the sun rises. How's that sound to you? Nice and thank you. <laughs> they zoomed into the chair. On a certain night, in a certain part of Tokyo, in a dorm room at a certain school, a lone student sits behind a locked door, staring at a bright screen intently for hours on end. Staring back is a transient streamer, who has been all the rage these days. Ooh, I'm beat. Lately, it seems like no matter where you look, there's nothing but bad news on tragic incidents. It's enough to bring anyone down. And over time, these bits of negativity gather in the soul like sediment at the bottom of the lake. But there's nothing most people can do about it. The only thing is to hold your breath, hold your tongue, and live your life, waiting for the bad time to pass. Say anything out of line, and you're bound to be the next victim of the world's bitterness. This dream is a total buffoon, but it feels so good to hear somebody speak freely all the time. This particular streamer doesn't hold anything back. Whatever thought crosses his mind, that's what he says. In many ways, it's impressive how eloquently things are said despite his apparent lack of prep time. And it's even cathartic in a way, for personal and even potentially controversial thoughts to be spoken of so openly. Hmm? The viewer gets a sudden sensation that they've met the gaze of the streamer. No, that's, no, that's silly! It's not even possible, but... Wait, no. It can't be! The viewer moves her head from side to side, up and down, and all around, yet the streamer's gaze follows these wounds exactly. Is this what his ability is? It seems almost unquestionable that the streamer is somehow watching this very viewer at this very moment. <laughs> How? Maybe there's some kind of trickery going on with the camera tracking? Hey, you there, watching the stream! What's your name? Uh, me. My name is Flynn Morrison. <laughs> okay, life wonders. <laughs> oh, they said. Oh my god, they made a 69 joke. <laughs> Wait, why am I talking to my screen? I feel so stupid. All right, you heard it here, folks. Uh, Red Fencer's name is Canonically Flame Lord Sixty Nine. <laughs> nice. So, what are you doing, all hunch up like that? You scared of something? Uh, what? Come on, show me what you've got. How about touching the screen? Go on, give it a poke. The viewer does as instructed, slowly extending a trembling finger toward the screen. Ready for real 69 for thrills, both clean and otherwise. This is Tindalos' channel, and today you are Tindalos too. Oh. Uh. The viewer begins to feel their muscles bulging and their clothes tearing, and first trying to cover their body. Oh, the dream. They feel their inner beast swelling, ready to be unleashed. <laughs> oh, hell yeah! 
following their sudden primal instincts, they start rapidly clawing and treading the walls of the room. Obscene profanities they would never even think of uttering under normal circumstances escape their lips one after another. There's only two genders! You what?! Just kidding. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Uh, this is freaking sweet! I've never felt so full of energy before! Nice and thank you! Uh, hey, uh, good morning. We're including duty today, so... Hmm? Is everything alright? The door opens, and the morning chill wafts in from beyond the dormitory's court roar. It's the dawn of a fresh new day. Wait, I'm back in my original body. B but my clothing... Oh, no, it's perfectly fine. Wait, it exploded off me earlier. In my wall? No markings at all. What? What's going on? Uh, what are you mumbling about? Did you have a nightmare or something? I think it was more like... Dream? I guess it could've. Ah, uh, what, what an amazing dream it was. Uh, Flame Lord 69 stares down at their screen, somewhat confused and dumbfounded. Nonetheless, they hesitantly click a couple of times, giving the stream a like and subscribe to the channel! Don't forget to leave comments and subscribe to mine. That's the first time and last time you'll ever hear that from me. That is a nice setup. This is the Team Delos channel, huh? The next morning, you meet with Katobopas at an arranged rendezvous location. Nice mic. And uh, speakers. My speakers aren't that nice. We've even got a bass setup there. Um, a few audio consoles, or whatever they're called, interfaces. Um, <laughs> and a keyboard too, so this is also for musicians. Um, a laptop for some reason. I guess it's just to... Uh, monitor on a different monitor. As you wait for Lian and Chi to arrive, Katobopas excitedly shows you the VOD of the livestream he was watching the night before. <laughs> what a very enthusiastic following. Teamless is a spectacular streamer, really. Definitely a top-tier creator. No doubt one of the more prominent influencers of today. Almost everybody's heard this name before. Very generous of Lian and to uh, hook us up with at least the, the top streamer going on right now. Live streaming, huh? An influencer, you say? Yeah? There's gaming content, live weight training, and basically everything in between on this channel. It influences someone who can affect others through streaming or broadcasting themselves online. And it's pretty clear that Tindalos definitely fits the bill. If we're actually able to initiate a collaboration, there's no doubt that all of our costs from will gain a ton of plat overnight. So that's the power of an influencer. So, where do we find this person? And for that matter, where are we? This is the video recording studio. We'll be meeting Dean Lowe's face to face here. Ah, Lian and Chi. Good morning. The double pause. Are you okay? Huh? What do you. Oh, you mean how I don't feel so timid around Lian and Chi? I guess. I think it's because we both prefer to stay unseen. We have a lot in common. We have a lot in common that way. You just met her, how do you know this? Good morning, we're back at you! Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. So, where's Tindy at? Are we early? Uh, he's already here. Or, I suppose it would be more accurate to say, he's already locked on to us. Uh... You watched my video, right? That's what it does. <laughs> Sup, Lian and Chi? You said you needed me for something. I take it that something is these two. Yes, that's right. Uh, let me introduce you. The owner of this voice you hear is Tidalos. Uh, but I don't see anybody. Where is that voice even coming from? Uh, from the screen. Look. Ooh, nice music. That's right. Pleased to meet you. I'm Tindalos, and word on the street is they're looking to collab with me. But you gotta understand, I'm not just gonna consent to working with people I know nothing about. We aren't gonna get anything to go viral if it's just neat and clean, superficial niceties. 
You gotta dig deep. And then go even deeper, so, and then pull out all of the dirtiest parts of yourself if you want to stand out with me. Believe or otherwise, right? That's Team Love Channel, baby! You gotta be ready for the flames. So, uh, shall we dance? Not quite where I was expecting to hear that music first. Influencers Part 3? Uh, there is a battle. Tall map. All nether enemies. Um, all of them unknown. So these are probably mobs then if they're all unknown. I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. Oh no no, it's probably a team loss himself then. Ooh, busted! Being a chi time. Actually, never mind. I'll just use Kotobu Bus since it's gonna be pretty useless for Lianon uh, to be here with the Ryota existing. <laughs> Alright, this is possibly fine. Let's go. Tindalos, the Hound of the Old Ones, who harbors a particular affection for the unclean. He exists as a being of ascended dimensionality, transcending space. To this end, it becomes necessary for him to use one of several particular methods to interfere with the three-dimensional world as we know it. One of them being to manifest a three-dimensional avatar to act as an envoy. Oh, does he only exclusively exist in the digital world then? Secreting a fluid that can infect and corrupt this world's data, Tindalos is capable of creating and unleashing more of these minions. These avatars are known as Tindalos proxies. Hey, I done this shingle. Oh, are you one of his listeners too? You too? Small world! Yep, clean or otherwise. Tindalos channel, yeah! The other customers in the studio, and even the staff, transform one by one into exact replicas of Tindalos. They begin jumping, breakdancing, and running around on all fours, clawing the walls and destroying everything around them in a spell of feral savagery. Transforming into Tindalos Proxy seems to have completely eliminated all of their inhibitions and afforded them both permission and opportunity to obey their own primal instincts. The studio turns into a form for pure chaos, a joyful indulgence in all things otherwise repressed. Oh, what's happening? Looks kind of fun though. There are my proxies, my puppets, my avatars, followers, both on stream and off. The team low speaking to you now is not any of the proxies, but presumably to the original, his voice booming over the speakers of one of the studio's computer terminals. Your proxies. Don't think I don't know who you are. You've been getting flamed bad, huh, Arison? No, not much in Akihabara. For some reason, people just aren't talking about you around here. Arin believes you're trying to take over pretty much every school, or even the whole game, from behind the scenes. But hey, if you are, I'll share this up to your channel. That's unclean as can be, and it's got file written all over it. The question is how oh, it's looking on screen. You're gonna have to show what you're made of to rake in those views. On cue, the team those proxies in the studio all immediately stop what they're doing and refocus their sights squarely on you. Are you jumping into battle already? These are my followers, which makes them my minions. All right, quite, but almost all parts of me. And the avatar who can't win this fight won't look too good on camera, so that'll be that for the Calab. Got it? All right, bring him on. Ho ho! Uh -huh. So I didn't just bring Kotar for no reason. I, if I remember correctly, Tindalo should have evasion as well. So Kotar plus heroes is that shit. But I, was, I would have brought him anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Evaged. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. No figure? Seriously? Come on. 
Okay, attack the Pinion Arc, that's good. Unfortunately, this will not be enough CP to get me to the next phase. <laughs> but I need my resource boosting. <laughs> okay, we can just... Yeah, we'll, we'll throw in the total pass over there. And he can go eat it. <laughs> I guess. Come on, order. Give me order. Sweet. <laughs> It looks like the real team is in the middle, even though he's shooting here. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what was I just doing? I think I just had a really, really lucid dream. Well, now, well, well, well. I can see you're no noob at this. That was quite the show, if I do say so myself. Quite the show indeed. Meanwhile... Billy. Oh, 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 we're professional agents. How can he take us down so easily? A professional my foot. You may be agents, but I've got more experience in my little toe than you've ever seen. How, how did you get out of your strengths? Were you just toying with us before? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. You think rank amateurs like yourselves can keep me in chains? Please. Sanoyu then proceeds to sever his body into numerous floating segments. Taste my duplication technique. This is what you get for messing with the Iga clan. <laughs> I don't think that this is what Alder Ninja would call duplication tech. <laughs> You know, you might have a point. I really don't need my to gesture my fingers like this, but don't I just look cool when I do? Sandy wiggles his fingers on his floating hand as he forms another hand sign. Ah, that should be the last of them. Free at last. Sandy reattaches his limbs and lets out a big sigh. There are no humans who can survive having their head or all of their limbs lopped off. Fortunately for him, Sandy Momochi, an elite ninja of the Iga clan, is not human. In Japanese folklore, there's tell of a specter known as Roku Rokubi. In Chinese, there's the Hitoban, and in Irish, the Dulahan. Sandoyu is something along these lines. These fools are definitely part of the same gold they used to belong to. They may not be much, but they're still agents. He used to, huh? Sandoyu busies himself looting the pockets of the agents he effortlessly subdued. The Agents is a guild consisting almost exclusively of spies and ninjas. It's a guild that exists solely for the convenience of having all the rights and privileges in the app that come with such affiliation. A convenience guild. They possess a large number of portals throughout Tokyo, establishing an extensive intelligence network, poised to infiltrate any organization. Hey look, it's the Gen 1 Agents. They're a guild and yet not, with a fundamentally different approach to maintaining portal possession compared to any other. One could say they're a guild in name only, a paper guild. Their members seek not to acquire more portals or win the game. Each work toward their own individual gains, be they financial or intelligence based. 
Okay, I'm starting to understand how exactly the agents can function as a guild because every single time that we see the agents, they seem to be doing contradictory things and working individually on their own and working for other guilds. So it's very confusing how they can exist as a guild. So it really is a, con a convenience guild for an individual game. Consequently, depending on their clientele, they could easily be allies one moment and enemies the next. This sure isn't my first time scrapping with other agents. Sandy muses that spies may be the single dirtiest beings in this world. They betray, deceive, and con their own friends, family, and even those they look up to, all in the name of business. I think Team Delos would have liked uh, these spies, uh, and perhaps he would have gotten along with uh, the invaders and Master as a result, if he actually found him. These are the types of people who will crawl through the thickest mud or the foulest tears to please their clients, all for the sake of a little cash or a morsel of hot intel. <laughs> Yesterday's friend is today's enemy, right? No hard feelings, I trust. This is just how it goes sometimes. Sandu flashes a cynical smile, then uses the key found in one of the agent's breast pockets to open the door and make his way out into the main complex, even though he could have just slipped out by separating his body. At least you got a little taste of what a pro ninja can do. Consider it some free on-the-job training from a superior. Don't forget it now. <laughs> Boundless Hill! Here's the grand finale! <laughs> Seems like you can hold your own pretty well. But then, Lian and Chi didn't recommend you to me for nothing. So yeah, I'm Tindlos of Tindlos Shell. Look on the board! Thanks, Tindlos. My name is Katobopas, and this is... Yo. It's all good, you two. I got your scent now. And I'm perfectly happy both to work with you and to refer you to our good master. I'm pretty sure producing a collaborative work with me should be enough to win you an audience. Really? However, I have some conditions of my own. Lay it on me. What do you need? I'm on my knees right now. First things first, I'm going to say it's imperative that you become one of my avatars, Harrison. Alright, sign me up. Where do I do it? What's that actually? That should be pretty obvious. You saw what happens to the others, right? You become Team Delos too. Then we act as one. Everything on the table, nothing to hide. Exposed down to your guts. We use that to give our video a catchy title like, Oh, the dark secret that awaits when the good battles end. Or, the real puppeteer at the heart of the game. Or maybe, exposing the hidden truth behind everything. Ooh, that's some real clickbait. I like it. And then bam, bam, bam! We've got a collaborative stream everyone in Tokyo is gonna want to click on. The ultimate clickbait, baby! What? You want viewers. This is how you get them. Think about it, Earthen. Um, I can't believe he sold out in three seconds. So what do you think, Arthur? About Team Los's terms and conditions. Exposing everything about you while you're still in hiding to make a video go viral. I don't think I like this Team Los guy very much. Uh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's not like we have any other options. Uh, besides this, he seems to know all about us already anyways. Thank you for concern, though, Kotobopas. Arathen. How about you? What do you think? If you have reservations, you can't say no. I... Um... I'm sorry. I, uh... I don't mean to say we shouldn't collaborate with Team Delos. I used your situation as pretext to excuse my dislike of Team Delos. But... I'm not even sure if I really do dislike him. The reality is, like, Team's inside. I know I'm just... The two of you walk along the moonlit streets of Akihabara, deciding on how to handle the offer from the eccentric streamer, when suddenly a voice breaks its way into your conversation. 
This game must continue indefinitely. Huh? Katobal fast quickly swivels to the set left and right to find the source of the mysterious voice. But there is no trace of anyone else to be found along this particular stretch of road. There is not even a shadow to be seen. Yet its players must never stop believing that it's possible to complete. It's a very difficult balance to maintain. I hope you can understand. Who is this? Is this voice coming from above us? Oh my god, it's Curtin, shit! Didn't expect her to just show her face like this. That's not even her chapter. Not the rule makers, that is. I think this is her first time meeting in this loop. Trophy, is it not? <laughs> Holy shit, calling it trophy. I'm the guild master of the rule makers, the true guild of the East. You may call me Curran. Ooh boy! 